If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. Our first step in solving this question would be to draw the arrangement of protons that's described in the question. So we have one proton located 4.3 meters vertically from the origin, and the second proton is 1.4 meters horizontally from the origin. Now to calculate the electric potential produced by these point charges, we need to look at the formula that we use to calculate electric potential by point charges. And in that formula, we see the electric potential is equal to a constant multiplied by the charge divided by a particular distance. Now, since there are two charges here, we're going to have to make two calculations for the electric potentials. And perhaps we can call the charge here Q1 and then the charge over here Q2. Now, these charges are both protons, so that means that the charge is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulomb. So we're going to plug that in for Q1 and Q2. And then R is simply the distance from each proton to the origin. So we'll plug those respective distances as well. So after plugging in the known values and computing it, we get the following two values in red for the electric potential produced by each charge. To get the total electric potential, all we have to do is add these two quantities together. Let's remember that electric potential is not a vector quantity, so we don't have to worry about x and y components and vectors and so forth. All we have to do is just add these together. And when you do that, you get a total electric potential equal to approximately 1.36 times 10 to the minus 9 volts. So this should be the correct answer to part A of the question. Now for part B, to calculate the total electric potential energy of a third proton that's placed at the origin, we have to consider the equation for electric potential energy between two point charges. So in that equation, we have that constant K multiplied by the charges and then divided by the distance between the charges. What we have to note is that we need to make the calculation two times. And the reason for that is because the proton at the origin is paired up with what we've called Q2, but it's also paired up with what we've called Q1. So we're going to have to make two calculations, once with the proton paired up with Q2 and once with the proton paired up with Q1. So here are the two equations set up. Note that in both equations, the Q term simply represents the proton that's located at the origin. So we'll plug in the known values. Notice that for the product of Q and Q1, since they're both protons, we've written that product as 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th squared, since we're multiplying the same magnitude of charge by itself. Same thing with the second setup of potential energy. We're multiplying the proton at the origin by another proton, so we can represent that as 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 squared. We'll pick up our calculators and process these two calculations. And we obtained these values for the potential energies. And then since potential energy is also a scalar quantity, just like the electric potential, to get the total potential energy, all we have to do is add the individual potential energies. And when we do that, we get a total potential energy of approximately 2.18 times 10 to the minus 28th joules. So this would be the correct answer to part B. So thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel. Remember, you're welcome to send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.